All right, we're back. Um, we are doing 6.4. 6.4 has to do with special parallelograms. So that's the name. Special parallelograms. So we have already talked about uh, one conditional statement, which was if it is a parallelogram, then certain things were true. Diagonals bisect one another, both opposite sides are congruent, both opposite sides are parallel, um, both consecutive angles are supplementary, and both opposite angles are congruent. Then we went over and said, if we knew those things were true, for example, if you knew the diagonals bisected one another, then the figure was a parallelogram. So that's what 6.2 and 6.3 were about. Kind of done with the parallelograms, just basic parallelograms. What we're doing now is we're looking at special parallelograms, okay? So this is the general look of a parallelogram. But then, is a rectangle a parallelogram? Are both opposite sides parallel? Hmm, interesting. Okay, so that's what we're going to be looking at now. Um, first part says, what's a rectangle, what's a square, and what's a rhombus? All right. So what's the difference between a rectangle and a square? Um, I remember my my little son was starting school and he showed me this. And he said, Daddy, look, that's a square. And then he said, it's not a rectangle. It's not a rectangle. And I was trying to give him like the precise definition of a rectangle and proving to like a three-year-old why this was actually a rectangle as well. And then I realized, all right, this is probably unneeded in uh, pre-K. So anyways, we're going to get into what is the true definition of a rectangle? What do you have to have for it to be a rectangle? What do you have to have for it to be a square? And what do you have to have for it to be a rhombus? Okay, let's go ahead and start with a rectangle. A rectangle, it's pretty easy. It's just a parallelogram with four right angles. That's a parallelogram. If I knew that that was right, that was right, that was right, and that was right, then it is going to be a rectangle. Okay? Now a rhombus is a parallelogram. You see why I do shorthand? It's such a long word. With all congruent sides. So this would be a, a rhombus, that would be a rhombus. Uh, there's many different ways to draw your rhombi, all right? And now a square is going to be a parallelogram with both right angles and all congruent sides. Ta-da! So now here's how it goes. The reason why I was telling my kid, hey, that thing that you called a square is actually a rectangle as well. The only thing that the figure needs to be called a rectangle is, is a parallelogram with four right angles. That's it, okay? So the fact that a square has that characteristic, then a square must be a rectangle as well. Okay. The next thing is uh, a rhombus. The only thing it needs to be a rhombus is it needs to be a parallelogram with all congruent sides. Is a square have all congruent sides and is a parallelogram? Yes. So a square is going to be a rhombus as well. This is how you can kind of think of it. Venn diagram. You have your rectangle and you have your rhombus. And then you have your square. If rectangle and rhombus fell in love and uh, got married and had a baby, that baby would be a square. So notice the square fits inside of the box for a rectangle because it is a rectangle. The square fits in the box that is a rhombus, so it is a rhombus as well. It has the characteristics it needs for those things. Okay, so let's go ahead and move on. Once again, 
here's your diagram. Okay. Um, let's go ahead and run through this. This is basically looking at all the characteristics that these figures have. All right. So if we looked at a rectangle, here is a rectangle. I don't want to really make a rectangle that um, looks like a square as well. I want to make a rectangle that's super stretched out so that it's, a speci it's specifically a rectangle. Um, it's not one uh, and also a square or something like that. So when we look at this rectangle, I'm curious. Look at the diagonals. Are the diagonals congruent? Yes, they are. So for a rectangle, diagonals are congruent. Do the diagonals bisect one another? Yeah, all parallelograms. So, so that's a yes. Do the diagonals bisect the angles? Draw this. Does it look like this angle right here is the same as that angle? And I could go over and make it even more stretched out if you wanted it. Does it look like the diagonal is bisecting the angle? No, it does not. So that is a no. Diagonals do not bisect the angles. And are the diagonals perpendicular? Does it look like those meet at a right angle? Nope. OK. So the two special characteristics that we have for a rectangle is the diagonals are congruent and the diagonals are going to bisect one another. Let's look at the next one. Let's look at a square. Now, some of you guys are probably pretty good at thinking, well, if a square is a rectangle, obviously it has all the characteristics that a rectangle has. And I agree with you, but I'm going to just draw this out. Are the diagonals congruent? Is that length the same as that length? Yes, it is. Diagonals are going to be congruent. Do the diagonals bisect one another? Well, absolutely they do because it's a parallelogram. Now let's look. Do the diagonals bisect the angles? Does that look like it's bisecting the angle? Yeah. Yes. Yes, yes. Mm -hmm. And the last one, does it look like the diagonals are perpendicular? Does it look like they intersect at 90 degrees? They do. And the last one I'm going to draw is a rhombus. I'm not making a rhombus that looks like a square. Do not go over and just make a square that's tipped on its side, and then it's going to look like it has a bunch of characteristics that it doesn't. Make a rhombus that is straight up only a rhombus. Boom. Boom. Are the diagonals congruent? Is that the same length as this? Nope. Are the diagonals bisecting one another? Yeah, because it's a parallelogram. Um, are the diagonals bisecting these angles? Does that look like it bisected the angles? And does this one look like it does? Yep. And lastly, do they look like they intersect at 90 degrees? Sure do. Now, once again, if I look at this, we already talked about a square is a rectangle, and a square is a rhombus. So it only makes sense that these two characteristics that the square has, or sorry, that the rectangle has, the square also has. The characteristics that a rhombus has, the square is also going to have. Okay. All right, let's move on. So what we're going to get is something like this. So this one, I'm just going to talk about how to do the proof. And then um, the second one will actually do the proof. So think of this. They already tell us that this is going to be congruent to that. We know that because it's given. The next thing is if this thing is a rhombus, which is a um, parallelogram, then we know the diagonals bisect one another. So I'd then be able to say that that's congruent to that. And then lastly, I would say that this is congruent to itself by the reflexive property. Now I know that these two triangles right here, 
these two triangles are going to be congruent by SSS. If those two triangles are congruent by SSS, then I know these two angles right here are congruent by CPCTC. I also know they're a linear pair. If they're a linear pair, then they must be supplementary. What is the only way that they can be congruent and supplementary? How can two angles add to be 180 and be congruent? Well, the only way that you would know that would be um, if they were both right angles, and that's what they were trying to do. We know that they're both right angles, therefore they're perpendicular. So once again, we're not writing a full two-column proof. That was teaching you the logic so that you wouldn't have to actually go through the whole process when you're looking at this and you're like, hmm, I wonder if those intersected 90 degrees. Same way if you had a kite, which we're going to be dealing with later, and you were like, definition of kite, those are congruent and these are congruent. I wonder if that's congruent to that. You could very quickly in your brain say, reflexive property, SSS, CPCTC. Yup, they are going to be congruent. So it's a lot of times we're not actually going to be fully doing the proof, just using the logic. So that was the logic. We showed the top uh, left and top right triangle were congruent by SSS. Therefore, the angles are congruent by CPCTC, congruent. We also know they're linear pairs, so they're supplementary. And the only way those two things can come together is if um, they were both right angles. All right, now this one, on the other hand, we're actually going to do. If we knew this thing was a rectangle, how in the world could we prove that the two triangles were going to be um, congruent so that we can get to the diagonals being congruent. Well, first figure out what two triangles you want to work with. I think this one I'm going to talk through as well, and I'm not going to full on do. Let's say we worked with this triangle, and we worked with this triangle. I'm going to draw them separately. By definition of rectangle, we already know that that's a right angle. Then, we know all parallelograms, the opposite sides, are congruent. And then this is technically the same side, because they're both the bottom. So those are congruent. And when you're looking at this, now it looks like these two triangles are congruent by what? Look at that. Why are those two triangles congruent? S-A-S. After you know the triangles are congruent, what do you know about that and that? The hypotenuse is congruent to the hypotenuse by CPCTC. And it just so happens that the hypotenuse and the hypotenuse are the diagonals of this thing. So that's the logic behind it. Using theorems and things we've already proved um, to somehow get a figure that's not triangles, but can break into triangles so that we can prove other things. All right, now, these are the ones that for some reason really are difficult for kids. Trying to figure out sometimes, always, or never. Remember our little thing here. Rectangle, rhombus, square. The characteristics of a rectangle is the right angle aspect. Rhombus is the all sides being congruent, and a square has both of them. So how often is a rectangle a parallelogram? I could actually do this. All of those are parallelograms. How often does a parallelogram with right angles, how often is that a parallelogram? Always. How often is a rectangle, a how often is a rhombus a rectangle? Is it possible for a rectangle or a rhombus to be a rectangle? Well, we know it's possible for a rhombus to be a square, and if it was a square, then it would also be a rectangle. Is it guaranteed? No. So this wouldn't be sometimes. How often is a rectangle a square? Is it possible for something with right angles to also have all congruent sides? Mm -hmm. Is it guaranteed? No. So that one would also be a sometimes.
how often is something that has all congruent sides and right angles, how often does that have right angles? Always. And then next one, how often is something that has all congruent sides and right angles, how often does that have all congruent sides? Always. Remember, these are kind of like definitions. Parallelogram with right angles, parallelogram with all congruent sides, parallelogram with both those. Notice they all fall inside the box of parallelograms. And if we wanted to go one further, we could have said quadrilaterals. There's different figures that are uh, quads that are not parallelograms, but all parallelograms are quads, all rectangles are parallelograms, all squares are rectangles, which are also parallelograms, which are quads. You guys did this when you were in Algebra 1 when you were talking about classification of numbers, and like whole numbers and natural numbers and stuff. All right, let's keep on cranking. Okay, now this kind of dips into uh, the next section. So we're going to dabble in it a little bit, but you're actually going to be doing a lot of this in the next section as well. So let's look. What is the most specific name for the parallelogram with these characteristics? If you knew that a parallelogram had diagonals that bisected one another, does that push it to being, do we know enough information to say it's a rectangle or a rhombus or all the way to being a square? No. All we know is that diagonals bisect one another, so that one would just be a parallelogram as specific as we can get. We didn't get any extra information. It's kind of like if all I told you was that something was warm-blooded, you could say it's a mammal, but you can't get to the point where you say that it is a dog or it's a beagle or if that it's Harold the beagle or something. You need more information to get more specific. Next, knowing all sides are congruent. What we already knew is a parallelogram. Now if we know all sides are congruent, what does that make it? Well, we know it's for sure a rhombus, but could it be a square? It could be, but we don't. they didn't give us enough information to push us to knowing it was a square. They didn't say anything about right angles. So this one right here would actually just be a rhombus. The next one, a parallelogram with a right angle. Squares have right angles, but squares need to have all sides being congruent too, and they didn't tell us anything about that. So a parallelogram with a right angle is just a rectangle. The next one, diagonals are perpendicular. That's a characteristic of a rhombus. It's also a characteristic of a square. Once again, did they give us enough information to push it from knowing that it's not just a rhombus, but it's also a square? I do not believe so. So that's just a rhombus. Next one, diagonals are congruent. What is the figure when you know diagonals are congruent? Rectangle. And when you know that they are perpendicular, it's a rhombus. So what's the figure going to be if we knew it was a rectangle and a rhombus? Square. The next one, a parallelogram with one pair of adjacent congruent sides. Let's think about this. Parallelogram with one pair of adjacent meaning next to one another congruent sides. Hmm. Well, that's weird because with a parallelogram, we know both opposite sides are going to be congruent. So that pushes us to knowing that it is a rhombus. I'm going to skip these ones because, like I said, this is technically 6.5. This is what 6.5 is. For some reason, they throw it into 6.4 a little bit. So if you are confused by this, I do not believe it's in your homework for 
So if you kind of want to just block that out of your mind and uh, look at it when we do 6.5, that is fine as well. It's basically figuring out how to figure out uh, what figure you're talking about by the characteristics. This is much more having to do with what we know. Well, we know if we're looking at a rhombus, we know diagonals are going to be bisecting angles. We know that they are perpendicular and we know that all sides are congruent. So let's figure out how we're going to do this then. So in this figure right here, if I wanted to try to learn what angle one, two, three, and four are, let's start looking through it. Diagonals bisect the angles. What I could do is knowing that that's 58, even though they don't ask me for it, I could put that being 58. That didn't really help me at all though. I also know the diagonals are perpendicular, so I could go in and put those in as right angles. And now we also know if these are congruent, these all sides are congruent, then the base angles theorem tells us that the opposite angles are congruent, so that would be 58. But wait a second, they said that the diagonals bisect the angles. So if that's 58, then that one's 58 as well. And then to figure out 4, I'll just do 180 minus 90, which is 90, and then minus 58, which leaves us with 32. Yeah, 32. So that means that that one's 32. So once again, these if we're talking about a rhombus, I can use all of these facts. I can use the base angles theorem because we know sides are congruent. I can use the angles um, are bisected by the diagonals and the um, diagonals are perpendicular. Let's go ahead and do this one real quick. So now, hmm, how am I going to do this? I'm going to go over and state that those are congruent. So we're dealing with this triangle. If those are congruent, then the opposite angles are congruent. So that one must be congruent to that. We also know that this triangle right here is 180 degrees. So if I subtract away the 104, that leaves me with 76 degrees. And with that, we said it must be split evenly between these two. So that puts you at 38. 38 and 38. And then this one says the diagonals bisect the angles. So if this is 38, what's this one? 38. If that's 38, what's that one? 38. So you're going to have problems in your homework that have to do with uh, rhombi. All right, we are almost done. So on this one right here, this is going to be our last problem. It says that if ln, if ln, this whole entire thing here is 4x plus or minus 17, and it tells you that mo is 2x plus 13, what are the lengths of the diagonals of triangle? Well, we already know that for a rectangle, the diagonals are congruent, so I could set those equal to one another. Subtract 2x, subtract 2x. You end up with 2x minus 17 equals 13. Add 17, add 17. That's 2x equals 30. So x equals 15. Okay. Now that we know that, it says what type of triangle is triangle PMN? PMN. Well, let's think about this. Um, we know that the diagonals bisect one another because it's a parallelogram, and we also know they're congruent. The only way they can bisect one another and be congruent is if that was congruent to that and these are congruent and they're all congruent to one another. Because that's like saying that that is a length of 10 and this is a length of 10 and both of them cut one another in half. Well, then it must be a five, a five, a five, and a five. So what type of triangle is it if it has two congruent sides? Isosceles. All right. Um, 
just to wrap this up, I know this was a longer one, just make sure you guys know what the definitions of rectangle, square, and rhombus are. You can do those sometimes, always, or never problems, and you know some of these characteristics. When we get into 6.5, we're going to be trying to figure out how to um, prove that a figure is a rectangle, a square, or a rhombus. Hope that made sense. Come to class with questions if you have them.